Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's got good karma on that rose on his hat. I like that. <laughs> Uh, Michael, generally, congratulations Thank you. Uh, on Thank taking you. the job. Uh, this is obviously a department that has dealt with a lot of scandal, two federal investigations over the past few years. What do you feel like, just in your experience as an athletic director, gives you the perspective necessary to, to handle a, a department that sort of needs a, a fix to its reputation, I guess? Well, I tried to allude to that a little bit mm -hmm. from the, the podium on questions and so forth, yep. but... I think in the end, it's to ensure first and foremost, let's make sure our student athletes are taken care of regardless of all the things that maybe we can't control or things that are happening around us. But I think it's also making sure we really listen and learn how did it happen? What mistakes did we make? And so that we don't do it again. And uh, that we really truly learn. Before we start leading, I didn't talk about coming in here, let's change this, let's change that, let's move this, let's move that. Uh, I think that's why I introduced the concept of fight on to victory. It's more than fight on, it's fight on to victory is the line. And it's in our fight song, it's an iconic song, it's one of the best, I've had it on my playlist since I was a kid. So I get it, So, but it is more than that. It's on to victory. So let's keep our eye on the ball associated with the things we want to try and instill, but let's not come in with preconceived uh, answers or maybe insights that I'm not aware of. I just arrived, it's my first time in the building, it's my first time having an opportunity to understand that, so it's gonna be critical to be a great listener, but to learn so that we can take our experiences and ensure that our student athletes never ever have to worry about the fact that they know, first and foremost, this athletic department, this institution is gonna set them up for success. I know, obviously you said that you'd like some time to assess the people in the programs that you're gonna be in charge of. In terms of the football season, it's only three weeks left in the season. Do you see that as a logical timeline that you would wait until the end of the season to make an assessment? I think it's premature to say at this point. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to support coach and support those players unequivocally. And uh, they're out there battling and they're representing USC and uh, we want them to be successful. Will you be in Arizona this weekend? No, I will be. Uh, I will actually, I'll be watching it on TV just like I watched the Oregon game. I will be in Cincinnati this Saturday to say goodbye. And uh, then I will head back Sunday and I'll be in the office on Monday. There was a report out that said that you and Dr. Fulton talked about Urban Meyer and that that might have led to some hesitation on your part. Is there any truth to that? Absolutely at all? not. There's, there's, there's no legs to that. No. Building no. Bill, Bill, on that, what, what autonomy or latitude do you feel you have in deciding that position? That's, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Sure. I think that in being an athletic director of four different institutions, they're all really a little bit different just based on sometimes zeros in your budget and, and the different pieces. I have yet to see a successful athletic director or be an athletic director in an environment where the autonomy all lies with the athletic director. We're a team. Our team of leaders will work together on that. So it's not an autonomous decision or anything about that. And I don't want to be a part of a situation. I want to be a part of a team. And I want to be a part of a team with great alignment and synergy and pulling it together. And uh, as I said, I've just come from an institution where if you say, what are you most proud of? I'm most proud of the fact that we, and I felt like I was a significant part of it, not a sole part of it, was building alignment and pe keeping people on the same page. And I mentioned talking of building and intensity of interest. That's how you do it. And we want to be the rallying point in that sense of pride for, for all Trojans, all 400,000 graduates around the world. We want them to feel like they're a part of it. This is their program, this is their university. And by no means is this some type of uh, one-man band. It's not, it can't be. Mike, after Colorado, oh, and actually. when you went to Cincinnati, did you feel like you had to change your approach I don't know if I would say change. I think that uh, uh, I think that for Cincinnati, embracing the fit there and embracing that uh, sense of sports being really important in the state of Ohio was a huge shot in the arm. We were just talking about the uh, Greater Cincinnati, Greater uh, Cincinnati Catholic League of, of football playing institutions in the state, and embracing that and that Midwest sense of culture that, hey, this is important to us, and, and embracing that, uh, rather than trying to adjust, I think it's more about trying to listen and learn, 
and take advantage of maybe some resources or maybe some uh, support or formulas or assets that maybe we're not aware of. So I think it's uh, through years of experience, I think that's what I really learned and was able to leverage into arguably the best entire season uh, in the history of the school athletically and to be able to go to the baseball championship and knock off the uh, defending national championship champions for the first time in 45 years and uh, the work Luke Fickle's done and Michelle Clark heard to come in and uh, uh, win 24 games in her first year in three postseason games and uh, for them to knock off Utah in their opening uh, two days ago I think it's about momentum and I think that's why it's got to be so many people putting together, working and plowing together, rather than thinking, hey, I'll pull out the sword and I understand the significance of, of Troy and all those different things. But if we don't have people with us and together, it, it's going to be a lot more difficult. You know, you mentioned the... Somebody looking in the Air Force program, as far as our big football program was there at Air Force, and then you moving forward. Being in that the football program is big here at USC, what is a level, a reasonable level of expectation? Well, I think we were talking like we were talking about the Air Force when we were in 1985. We in my uh, second year there, we were number five in the country and knocked off Texas in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. And uh, uh, Dee Dallas, who uh, is no longer with us, unfortunately, was a Heisman Trophy finalist. I think it's about competing and playing at the highest level. No question. And how, and give, given where you guys are, how what's a reasonable timeline to get back to that point? I, I think it's probably pre premature to, to even mention and think about that until I learn more about what we're doing. But uh, I think that's why I came here. We want to compete for national championships uh, across all sports, and that includes obviously includes the football program, and uh, we want to be in the Rose Bowl. Okay, I got to cut it off, guys. Thank you. Thank I you. Enjoy